We are going down the rabbit hole and through the looking glass. Welcome to Up All Night DIY. I'm Monica. Thanks for joining me. Today's the Alice in Wonderland Christmas in July challenge hosted by my sweet friend Annie of Crafting with Indiana Jones and Antoinette of Antoinette Decorating. You'll find links to their channels in the description box. Please be sure to check them out and tell them that I sent you. Let's get into it. To start, I'll be using this cool teacup planner. I bought this several years ago. My plant outgrew it and I had already painted it for a Nightmare Before Christmas vignette and I think it's perfect for Alice in Wonderland too. I'll need a couple of skewers, got these at the Dollar Tree, some Model Magic, paper doilies, I got these at the Dollar Tree also. There's four different sizes in the package, it's like a package of 36. And I'll also be using some Robin's Egg spray paint, which I'll use to spray two of the large doilies to make Alice's skirt, just like this, but we'll get back to these. We'll put them aside. Right now, I grab a large handful of Model Magic and I'm going to roll it into a 12 inch cane. I want to say it's probably about an inch thick. Once I'm there, I'm going to cut them into two six inch lengths. This will be Alice's legs. At one end of each leg, I'll roll it into a soft point, and I'm going to make sure that the legs are both the same size. I'll use my clay tool to make impressions in the clay to form her foot, the heel first, then I'm going to give her a bend at the knee and she'll need an arch to her foot. Now if you don't have a clay tool, you can always just use a paintbrush handle. That works too. And I'm really just making like a little indent, not anything spectacular, just very simple indent. Now this leg will be straight, so I'll just shape her foot. And I'll give her a slight dent at the knee with my um, clay tool. I'm just kind of reinforcing those divots there. Ever so slightly at the knee there. There we go. I push the skewers into the legs and I'll set them aside overnight to dry. In the meantime, we'll work on some embellishments. First, we'll make a figgy pudding, that traditional Christmas sweet. So I've rolled a clay ball and that's going to be our figgy pudding. We'll need some Christmas elements after all. I mean, this is Christmas in July. Yeah, so I rolled the ball and I flattened the bottom just a wee bit to give it more of a dome shape. And I'm going to set that aside to dry overnight too. This embellishment is super quick. I just filled a wee bottle with blue Windex, popped a cork in it, and I'll add a tag that says, of course, drink me. I hit the edges of the tag with some black ink, you know, to add some interest. And all I do is thread it with black and white baker string and tie it to the bottle. I did add a wee filigree stamp to the negative space there too. You can see that in the close-up. An Alice vignette wouldn't be complete without a Drink Me bottle. Timu sent me these adorable little wooden mushrooms, which will do nicely for this project. So I'll give them two coats of white, then I'm going to paint the caps with ceramic coat watermelon two coats. I'll give them white dots using a sponge dolver and then we'll let those dry for a mo. I found some other useful items in my stash from Valentine's Day. This clay heart and these foam Dollar Tree glitter hearts. I also have this bag of keys so I'm going to pick out one of those. Yep, this is a good one. Now that the dots are dry on the mushrooms, I'll hit the mushrooms with some black ink just on the edges. Let's work on the clay heart. I pulled out the string and I'll thread the key onto it before I re-thread the string through the heart. I'm adding this cool rando bead that I found that has hearts on it. Then I'll thread it through the heart 
and I'll add another plain silver bead on top later. It was just another odd bead that I found in my treasure box. And I'm just using a piece of paddle wire to pass the thread through the heart. It took a little doing to get that thread out of there, but, you know, eventually I do. I stamped the center of the heart with that same filigree stamp that I used on the tag. I thought silver ink was called for here. I had this Dollar Tree top hat ornament in my stash. It was beat up, so I pulled it apart and revamped it with some black cardstock. I had done this once before, so luckily... I still had the template to cut out the cardstock to fit it. There's plenty of glue left on the styrofoam, so I'm just going to wrap the cardstock around the hat and secure it with some hot glue. Also, I'm using a wood circle that I painted black as the brim. And I'll just line up the edges and wrap it right around. There we go. A line of hot glue will hold that in place. And I covered the top with a cardstock circle. I made an in this style 10 over 6 sign for the hat and I'll hit that with black ink. I also hit the checkerboard band that I cut from cardstock, or not cardstock, scrapbook paper with some ink as well. I will glue those into place. Then I will glue the hat to the brim. To give the hat a Christmas touch, I'll apply snow text to the top and to the brim, and I'm going to shake on some sugar glitter to add a little sparkle. I added some greenery to the brim, and I'm making a small bow with some black and white Dollar Tree ribbon to make the hat a bit more dashing. There. Done and done. Our legs are dry and ready for paint, so let's give each two coats of white. Paint on her shoes with ceram coat charcoal, and I'll stripe her stockings too. I did my best to keep the lines on her stockings straight. You know, I'm, I'm not too worried about it. When the legs are dry, I'll give them a coat of Mod Podge to seal them. And I did seal the clay heart, too. I give the figgy pudding two coats of Americana Bittersweet Chocolate. And that will also get sealed with Mod Podge as well. I added a wee foil candy wrapper to the bottom. And to make the glaze, I'll roll a small ball of Model Magic, shape it with my fingers, and lay it right on top of the pudding. I glue three pip berries and some paper leaves on top to serve as the traditional holly. So cute, right? We are ready to assemble. I glue a piece of foam to the bottom of the teacup. I fold my blue doilies in half and I'll line the cup with them, forming Alice's skirt. Now I'll fold two more of the large white doilies and quarters and I'll add them to act as the crinoline of her skirt. 
I want to keep that foam in the middle though visible because I need to stick the legs in there. Okay, there we go. Now we're just going to push the legs right in. All that's left to do is to surround it with its embellishments and display it. Okay, my next project, this is another quick one. I made this teacup at Easter. I'll link the video in case you wanna see how I painted it. And I'm gonna reuse this just by adding some character prints. I googled Alice in Wonderland images, sized them in Photoshop, and printed them onto cardstock. I'm going to use a glue stick to add this black cardstock to the back of each image for extra support. Printing up characters on paper is such an easy way to put together an assemblage that really has a big impact, I think, and it's cost very little and really doesn't take much effort. Okay, once I get all my images on the black cardstock, I'm going to fussy cut them. I try to get as close to the edge of each image when I do this, but, you know, it's personal preference, really. And now I'm going to hit the edges with some black ink. And I've cut down some skewers to size, and I'm just going to hot glue them right to those skewers. Before I assemble the pieces, I'll add some red ink to the white roses, just like the card soldiers did in the book. So as I said, I glued the characters to the skewers, and I'm just going to push them into the cup. I have a Queen of Hearts, an Alice, and a White Rabbit. The Cheshire Cat will get some heart beads down his skewer, and he's going to go in the very back. And I'm just going to fill in some of the open spaces with cards, hearts, and some ribbons. And of course, we need a pocket watch. It wouldn't be complete without a pocket watch. Here's a look without the cloche. And one with the cloche. Here's a final look at our projects today. You know, I've always loved Alice in Wonderland, and I just recently found out that Lewis Carroll considered the name Alice in Elfland. I think that's cute, but not as cute as Wonderland. Alice was also the first female lead in a children's book. She's smart, curious, and adventurous. So I hope you enjoyed today's projects. I sure had a lot of fun. I want to thank Antoinette and Annie for hosting. Please be sure to check out their links. They are below in the description box as well as the playlist. Make sure you go over, watch all the awesome creators do their thing. You won't be disappointed. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe and all that good stuff. Stay creative, my friends. Thanks for hanging with me. See you next time. Up all night with Monica.